You can stay if you want, Snapper. I told Mary and John I'd be there by three. Do you expect me to believe that, Jill? Why, what are you saying? I know about the late night phone calls, the last minute plans. Do you think I'm some kind of fool? I'll tell you something, Jill. You tell that boyfriend of yours that if he shows his face here once, don't miss it. SCTV's new adult soap opera, The Young and the Wrestling, No Holds Barred. Thursdays at 9. Be there. Tired of ordinary television? Don't touch that dial. SCTV is now on the air. Starring Joe Flaherty. Eugene Levy, Andrea Martin, Rick Moranis, Dave Thomas, featuring Robin Duke and Tony Rosato. Television like you've never seen it before. This is the SCTV Television Network. Good morning and welcome again to Money Talk. I'm Brian Johns and today we're going to be talking to a man with a lot of money. He's William E. Douglas, the Vice President and Chairman of the Efron Corporation, which is a, a large holding company which controls over $30 billion in assets. $30 billion. So we filmed the interview last weekend at Mr. Douglas's fabulous Bill Air home, and so why don't we look at that film now? <laughs> well, here I am at the fabulous estate of Mr. William E. Douglas, and Mr. Douglas, this uh, real big house you got here, how much would a place like this cost? Well, Brian, with the market the way it is and interest rates, the fact that uh, over the last few years demand for property in this general area has increased, I would say that the home is worth... Uh, eight, maybe ten times what I paid for it several years ago. And how much was that exactly? Well, it was under a half million, Brian, but we have 40 acres. Half a million dollars, so half a million dollars times ten would be, um... Five million dollars? I would say Whoa. under. Under five million dollars, <laughs> Brian. But the point is, is that real estate can be a sound investment, and I've always believed that. Is, is it very difficult to become rich? I'm sorry? I mean, were you, were you rich when you were my age, or <laughs> when did you become rich? Well, it's certainly not a rags to riches story, Brian, that there will always be a disparity. You see, Brian, the relative value of a good or a service is dependent upon the supply and demand within the marketplace. Ah, Milius. Yes, sir. I would like some ice water. Very good, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, I'll have a Pepsi. Very good, sir. Thank you, Malia. <laughs> Are servants expensive? Like, what would you pay that guy? How much would a pool like this cost? Well, it's part and parcel with the house, Brian. I imagine with labor and material costs, this would be fairly expensive uh, to replace today. Are your neighbors rich? How do you buy into something? Do you uh, use your own money, or do you have to take a loan from the bank? Well, now, that's an interesting question, Brian. Uh, most of our acquisitions now are funded by a bank which we set up ourselves, so that, in a sense, we're doing both of those things. Do you, um, do you have to be rich to buy into something? Well, that reminds me of my very first portfolio which I set up. It was a series of mortgages for which I used my home and car as collateral. Now, it was low risk, and the return was certainly limited. Do you, do you know, uh, is there a... A cheaper one that someone like me could buy into, for instance? Well, a good broker could recommend a series of investments for you, Brian. Mrs. Douglas said 5 o'clock, Eric, so that should work out perfectly. Very well. Thank Goodbye, you. Brian. It's fabulous. So much room in here. Is this car very expensive? A fabulous weekend at the estate of William E. Douglas. Next week on Money Talks with Brian John. We'll be talking to um, Gerald Tyler, who's uh, 32 years old, same age as me, and 
he's just as smart as he is, but but he, he came up with an idea to uh, build toilet paper dispensers with radios in them. And he's a millionaire now, so we'll talk to him next week about how he got rich. And uh, till then, bye for now. Join the hijinks on SCTV's Make Me Bar. Do you recognize that, Mrs. Armstrong, or not? She doesn't seem to. Let's try this. Do you recognize that? Take a good whiff of it. <laughs> she doesn't seem to. Okay. There you go, Mrs. Armstrong. You lose. <laughs> Make Me Bar, Thursdays at 9 on SCTV. Good evening, I'm Walter Cronkite. Welcome to the SCTV Money Movie my factory myself. But first, a personal footnote. Perhaps some of you read about my controversial departure from CBS News. But what you may not know is that ever since SCTV went on the air three years ago, my sole goal has been to get out of my contract with those creeps at CBS and join the happy gang at SCTV. <laughs> That, combined with the sudden and tragic disappearance of Mo Green, so moved me that I knew there was only one man to fill his giant shoes. Me. <laughs> Hats off to you, Mo, wherever you may be. Now let's go to the phones and make some calls. We'll be calling the Washington area. We'll be calling Senator Edward Kennedy. I'll just shield the phone with my body here so that you don't see his number. I don't want him disturbed unnecessarily. <laughs> Hello? 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 Hello, is that you, Ted? Who is this? This is me, Walter Cronkite. Walter Cronkite? Yes, I'm calling about the SCTV Money Movie. Money Movie? What are you talking about, Walter? It's four o'clock in the morning. Well, I'm sorry for disturbing you so late, Senator Kennedy, but if you can just give us the name of the money movie, you'll win yourself a whopping $280. You called me up in the middle of the night for a lousy $280. Uh, look, Walter, forget it. I'll see you later. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Hey, what? Don't hang up, Ted. I've got your number. I'll keep calling you until you talk to me. Well, look, I'll, I'll give you $280 if you just get off this damn phone oh. and let me get back to sleep, all right? All right, thank you. I'll take that $280. Thank you. Well, that's good. That drives our jackpot up to $560, thanks to the generosity of Senator Kennedy. We'll be making more calls later, but now on with the movie, My Factory, Myself. Written by a woman, directed by a woman, and produced by a woman. So you men might want to just take off for a while, grab a sandwich or a pizza or something. <laughs> Female chauvinism stuff. Good enough about the ERA when I was a newsman. All right, roll the film. <laughs> Adamitis. Well, speed it up. You know, darling, I am willing to give you a promotion. If you let me do it, do you? <laughs> Adamitis, will you let me do my work? Look, why don't you and I just go for a little roll in the hay? Or I'm gonna show wages. Adamitis, I can't work with you hanging over my shoulder. Oh, you can't, can you? Well, can you work with this hanging over your shoulder? <laughs> I don't have to put up with this. This is sexual harassment. I am not a sexual object. I'm a factory worker. Oh, look 
the way her jugs bounce when she gets mad. <laughs> and speaking of jugs, I think I'll attack one of my secretaries and then have her make me a fresh cup of coffee. Helen! in a rage, Michael. I'm so angry I could scream. I wish I could tell you what's going on, but I feel so dirty, so embarrassed, so ashamed. Uh-huh. What's wrong, Michael? Is something on your mind? I'm leaving you. <laughs> I've, been, I've, been, I've been in love with another woman. <laughs> I'm going to ma marry her. my volunteer work. Wait a minute. Who's gonna, who's gonna take care of Billy? <laughs> I'm leaving you, Michael. Don't try to stop me. Walter Klondike will be back with more of the FCTV Money Movie after this. If you're tired of holding it all to where your money goes with revealing graphs like income and expenses, budgets, net worth, and more. And it's fast. Quick and just reconciled my whole bank statement in two minutes. So, if you have a PC with DOS or Windows or a Mac, call now. To order, call 1-800-624-0745. Quicken's regular price is $69.95, but call now and pay just $49.95. Money back if not delighted. Turn to me. Coming soon, it's a family affair on the Sammy Modlin Show. My melody. Um, I think America's ready to see this kid. I really do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Bittman's little brother, Skip Bittman. Yeah! <laughs> How's it hanging? I think it's great when two brothers can come on our show and just be themselves. Uh, the Bittman well, Brothers, real people of FCTV. In case you've just joined us, the name of today's money movie is My Factory, Myself. I'm Walter Cronkite, your host here on Dialing for Dollars. Let's not waste any time. Let's go to the phone and make another call. The jackpot today is up to $560 right now. Some lucky winner is going to walk away with a bundle. He can just name the name of the movie. Hello? Hello? This is Walter Cronkite calling from Dialing for Dollars. Yeah, what? You know the name of our money movie. Money movie? You mean that thing about the broad in the factory with the husband who's crying all the time, that thing? Well, that's the substance of it. If you could just give us the name of the movie. Uh, I, I can't remember. I turned it off. It was crap, that thing. <laughs> hey, what's your language worth? Hey, you mean you spilled something on your lap? <laughs> oh, I said the movie was crap. Let me remind you that your voice is being transmitted over the airwaves. So what? How many people you think are watching that lousy movie of yours anyway, you old clown? Get off! Old clown, is it? You lousy little son of a... Why don't you just go yourself? Goodbye! Well, take that kind of stuff from people. Pranksters everywhere. We'll be making more calls later. Until then, roll that movie. Roll it! Oh, clown. Dr. Dr. Genius. Hello, Biff. I brought you your dinner. 
You're going to put a dent in your forehead if you keep hitting it like that. It is an unweeded garden. Dolly? Please loosen the strap. Now, Biff, you know I'm not supposed to. What are you afraid of? I think you've had enough television for today. Why don't I get you some dinner? There. You idiot! You idiot! You almost spilled that food all over me! What are you so uptight about? I'm having problems at home. My working conditions at the factory are terrible. My boss keeps sexually harassing me. Harassing? I thought it was harassing. No, that's it on the first syllable. Some people put it on the second. Why don't you form a union? A union? I don't know the first thing about a union. Do you think I could? Of course I can. I'm a woman. Never, I wouldn't. I don't really. I'm Come on. <laughs> Come on. I'm warning you. Billy, don't... Don't take that ice cream out. Billy! Now, don't take a bite out of that ice cream. I'm warning you. I'm giving you one warning, Billy. Billy! Don't... Billy! Don't... Don't take a bite... <laughs> <laughs> Look, the only way you're going to get better working conditions is to form a union. We don't want any trouble. We don't want to lose our jobs. Get out. All right. If you won't listen to me, then maybe you'll listen to someone else. You all know her. My mother. She's worked here for 40 years, and all she has to show for it is a withered body and a hearing aid. Sit down, honey. I'll talk to them now. Not yet, Mother. Will you stop trying to run my life? Wait till I'm finished. Bennett? You have a lot of Bennett. I did too, Mother. It's broccoli I didn't like. Well, don't get upset. If you want to have spinach, then go right ahead and have it. Mother, what does this have to do with forming a union? An onion? With your spinach? Well, don't blame me if you break out in a rash. All right, Mother. Speak to them. Well? Yes. All right, Mr. Speak to My mother. Well, you all know me. I'm hard of hearing Harriet. And I got this way because I got my head caught in a sewing machine. And my ears got stitched together. And do you think they give me compensation? No. I didn't even get the rest of the day off. I just sat there with my ears zigzagged together while the foreman tried to cop a field. And that's why... <laughs> Everybody, that sounded like a new 
nuclear explosion! Oh, All right, don't worry about it. Don't worry. That was not a nuclear explosion. It was a, a, a truck. That's right, a truck. It was a truck backfire. But hurry, to get back to work. Rest you girls, take out your clothes and report to my office. Oh, I don't feel so <laughs> You see that? He's dead. This plant is not safe. Now, are we going to form a union or aren't we? Yes, 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 yes union, 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 darling. Yes, you got to be the foreman. Yes, you got to be the foreman. Everybody, I'd be proud to be your foreman. Oh, everybody, back to the machine. There's work to be done. All right, Gail, speed that up. Got to move a little bit faster. Bob, don't you think you should be going a little bit faster? Well, Dolly, I can't work with you hanging over my shoulder. Can you work with me hanging over your shoulder? <laughs> Next weekend, it's the alphabet as only Comedy Central can do it. It's the Comedy A to Z countdown. 26 letters for 36 shows in 32 hours. Hey, don't make me do math. It all starts with A as in Pepsi's A-list, and we won't stop till we get through Z. Seven straight episodes of the famous Teddy Z, and it's all hosted by Teddy Z's own Alex Rocco. Watch the Comedy A to Z countdown. Start the protein matters. Insist on IMS. I didn't really know what dirty laundry was till I had Tommy. I'm a new mom. Everything's a mess. I go from one meal to the next meal. He gets everything on him. Mud stains, grass stains, juice. Before I had laundry. Now I have laundry. I learned from trial and error. When you've got a grass stain this bad, a regular detergent only gets it this clean. But Tide with bleach gets it cleaner. Having kids is one thing. Having clean kids is another. If it's got to be clean, it's got to be Tide. You've got to be ready for anything. Yes, I'm off the hook. Huh, not enough stuff to do these dishes. Not so fast. You just need a spoonful with joy. <laughs> All these greasy dishes with one spoonful of joy? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't buy it. Well, I do. Using so little saves us money. Compare a spoonful of lemon joy to many leading brands. They quit leaving all these dirty dishes. But joy cleans the whole sink full. Spoonful worked. Joy saves us. Uh, but not from drying the dishes. The joy spoonful cleans a sink full. Comics Only is two comics, one count. What do you get when stand-ups sit down? 30 minutes of comedy disguised as a talk show. Watch Comics Only next here at Comedy Central. Well, that's it for our movie, My Factory, Myself. I hope you enjoyed it. Personally, I thought it stunk. But we still have $560 in our money movie jackpot. So let's go to the phone and make one more call. Hello? Hello? Is Jose there? No, there's no Jose here. You must have the wrong number. Oh, oh perhaps I dialed incorrectly. I'm sorry. Try that same number again. Hello, this is Jose. Uh, any messages for me? Is this supposed to be some kind of a joke? Yes, it is, and a damn funny one at that. <laughs> well, I love that old Jose thing. <laughs> Perhaps we have time for just one more. Give it a whirl here. Yeah, hello. Uh, hello, is Jose there? Yeah, just a second, I'll get him. What? Uh, hello. Uh, this is uh, Walter Cronkite. Uh, never mind. Well, it's a million to one shot, but sometimes you get caught out on that old joke. That's a warning to you. Don't try it. Well, I'm Walter Cronkite. That's all the time we have for today. Join me again on the FCTV Dialing for Dollars. Coming up next, watch the comedy talk Boy, show, Comics Only. Tonight. Join GQ boy Paul Fenza for the funniest, edgiest talk show on your TV dial. Keep it right here at Comedy Central.
Hi, I'm Bill Maher, host of Politically Incorrect. Join me for an all-new Politically Incorrect tonight at 8.30 p.m. only at Comedy Central. At work or at home, if you've ever had to count quantities of coins, you know how time-consuming and frustrating it can be. Well, you need the Coin Master.